Guys, welcome back to another episode of Superbike Surgery TV. So, KTM 1190 Adventure here on the bench. Got a good one for you today. Lots of interesting accessories to fit. Hope you enjoy it. So look at all these goodies we've got to fit. We've got an ignition module which goes with the power commander and the power commander also has the auto tune setup which is going to be I think the interesting bit for a lot of you most of you are probably familiar with what a power commander does I'll talk a little bit about it as we fit it um, this auto tune setup basically allows you to make your own fuel map without the requirement of going to a dyno and having somebody charge you an arm and two legs to make you a custom uh, fuel map we've also got to go with it we've got the little Dynajet screen that's quite interesting as well um, so just quickly before we get into actually doing the job this auto tune setup it comes with two uh, one for each cylinder obviously this bike's a v-twin it comes with two wide band o2 sensors now i call them o2 sensors you can call them lambda sensors you can call them oxygen sensors same thing Let's call them O2 sensors for the sake of argument, just so we all know what we're talking about. So the bike originally has, well, has two O2 sensors in the exhaust pipe already, um, which go into closed loop when the engine's hot. I won't bore you with the detail, but trim the fuel map slightly. Um, anyway, so we need to get rid of the original O2 sensors in the exhaust, um, and we blank them off, unscrew them and blank them off with these little stainless steel plugs and there are a couple of other little bits that plug into the electrical connector for the O2 sensors to stop fault, fault codes being generated. So we take the old... I'm going to show you this as we do it, but just to explain what I'm going to do first. So we're going to blank the original O2 sensors off. Now, that's the thread. It'll focus for the original O2 sensor that's in the exhaust now. And then the wideband sensor is a lot bigger. So the first hurdle got to weld these to the exhaust so we're going to blank off the original ones with those plugs we're going to find a suitable spot for these got these separately the the Dynajet kit does come I don't know where they are it does come with mild steel ones but it ain't mild steel the exhaust that's on this bike it's stainless steel so got some stainless steel bosses hold on a minute they're going to screw into there so they need to be welded to the exhaust so we're going to find a suitable spot for these and let's take you to the bike and I'll show you so this exhaust is going to have to come off this bike to be able to do this uh, we're going to find a suitable spot we're going to take these O2 sensors out blank the hole off and then we're going to TIG these onto here we're going to mark where we want them to be we're going to drill a hole the right size hole probably dress these with a grinder a bit so they're the right size and weld them on there I think probably by there somewhere and then on the back here you can see in there obviously this exhaust got to come off I'm gonna probably stick this one slightly out at an angle we'll see as we do it I'm gonna I'm gonna have a fiddle now and have a mark and figure out where exactly I'm gonna put them so that's the first job take the original exhaust system off weld these bad boys to it and then we'll go from there She needs a tickle from the persuader to come off, I think. It's been on there a long time. Hmm. Well, blow me, that was a lot harder than a little tappity tappity tap tap. I thought I was gonna. Oh, look at that exposure, that's a bit weird. Is that my glove doing that? Yeah, that was way harder getting that exhaust off than it had any right to be. It was all blooming seized on. Anyway, 
onwards. So this little socket here, I don't know whether you've ever seen one of these before, it's a special socket for an oxygen sensor. It's got this cutout so you can put it round the wire lock and then get your ratchety jobby on there. Um, it's already cracked it off before I, I took the exhaust off so it's already loose. Uh, yeah, so unscrew this, just twist up the wire as I'm getting it out at the moment and then I'll, I've got to take the tank and the seat and all the gubbins off to put the power commander on the stuff so let's unwangle that wire so that's uh, so that's that um, so the where's my little jobby gone uh, here it is so this one is going to go focus this one's going to go there it's already got a scallop in it look um, but it's not the right, hang on, how can I show you, it's not the right pipe's not quite the right diameter so I need to just grind a bit out of that, focus I suppose it is, that's better, so I need to grind a little bit more out of this make a hole in there that size, 18mm I think it is from memory and then weld that around there happy days, that's how I focus isn't it anyway, see you on the other side So there we have it, a little bit of tiggy wiggy, uh, get this in shot, so that would be on there like that, I've faffed around trying to get it in the right place, that obviously the exhaust isn't on yet but I'm pretty sure that's going to be okay, so next job I'm going to put the exhaust on and then take the tank and the seat and all the other gubbins off and we can start thinking about the, sorting out the actual plumbing in of the power commander. Oh, I just got a bit distracted. I started looking at this screen and started thinking, where am I going to put this screen? And I, I kind of, the, the most convenient place, I think, because you want to be able to, anyway, uh, I'm going to make some, I'm going to use some of this alley angle and I'm going to use this, one of these bolt holes for the <coughs> clamp for the handlebars. I'm going to make myself a little bracket there and then VHB tape it onto the bracket just by there somewhere, I think. Anyway, onwards. Just uh, screw the end of this up. So a little bit of sculpturing like that and then that is going to pull through there onto the yoke like that and then we'll have another piece coming up here going over the top with, I'll probably just rivet it on with two little rivets maybe although then I won't be able to get that bolt out so but then I could drill a hole in the thick, I don't know, we'll figure this out as we go Here's a top tip for you, don't be a dick like me. Yeah, I could hear some of you cringing watching me drilling whilst wearing gloves like this. They can easily get hooked up on the drill but if you're not paying attention, pull your hand in and yeah, it doesn't end well. If I sound like I'm speaking from experience, that's because I am. So this is what we've ended up with. Uh, it's actually worked out quite well. So I've just got one bolt through there. But it's butted, this bit's butted right up against there so it doesn't rock around anyway, yeah. And then I'll VHB that onto there. It'll be bolted on the yoke. And then it can come apart. We can, you 
you can take the bracket off to undo the yoke pinch bolt anyway onwards right then so some VHB tape on here um, talking of VHB tape you hear that term mentioned a lot VHB so VHB is a trademark of 3M um, it, it stands for very high bond and it basically means super fucking sticky tape you can get it in all sorts of different thicknesses widths and like this is black stuff uh, that's what they tend to use in the automotive industry for sticking panels on and stuff this grey stuff you get this on the back of your GoPro mounts and stuff like that. This is uh, a little bit thinner than this one. Look on the 3M website, there are like a gazillion different types of this tape, but it's all under the same banner, VHB. Anyway, so I've got some VHB tape on there. Clean this off with some alcohol. Um, and are we going to stick that on there? Let's line it up perfectly with the handlebar. Perfecto. Right, that takes care of that little piggy. On with the rest of it now. Oh my days, this isn't going to plan. Um, so several hours have passed since I last checked in. So this is the Dynajet kit, the Auto-Tune the Power Commander 5 and the ignition module here on this side. So I've put them on this side. They suggest putting it on the other side, but there's a module in the way for the, I think it's the suspension control module or maybe the ECU for the fuel injection. Anyway, it doesn't matter. There's no room the other side. This is the only place I can find to put these, uh, these boxes. So I've got it mainly wired up. I've got all the wiring run up and down the frame. Coils both coils for both cylinders are connected up the got this crank position sensor um, not crank position sensor, the yeah crank position sensor um, that's not connected up yet I'll explain what's going on with that in a second uh, the injector wirings down there they're unplugged at the moment anyway um, oh and this wiring uh, don't judge me <laughs> nothing to do with me this this is something to do with it's got an aftermarket horn on it so this wiring is a little bit terrifying um, so I've got a problem guys and I have no fucking clue what is going on with this bike so let me explain I'll go around the other side this little box of tricks here well let me explain what I've just done so you can see the power command is kind of on there and a little bit still disconnected it's been all connected up all back together, fuel tank on, had the bike running, everything was sweet, digital display was working, happy days. The only thing left to do, I also had this box here, to follow the wires all the way up the frame, or, or stop here, that box there, these are some of the wires, that box plugs into the OBD connector, this is the wires coming from that box here, this is one of the OBD, this is the OBD plug, for the onboard diagnostics for the bike plugs into there you follow the wires all the way up uh, and it also plugs into the throttle assembly it's fly by wire throttle which means fly by wire fly by wire throttle or at least that's how it's described by a lot of people no throttle cables there's a, a potentiometer in the throttle and as you twist the throttle it's all ones and zeros down a wire that make this the servo motors open and close the throttle butterflies anyway um, so that little black box of tricks at the back there plugs into these wires and then it is a it's a cruise control which is kind of cool and it's supposed to be plug and play if you read the instructions it's like literally plug into the OBD plug plug into the throttle assembly plug Put this switch on the handlebar, happy days. Anyway, so I've had the bike running, everything's fine. Power Commander appears to be working perfectly, exactly what I expect. And I'd left the plugging in of those wires down there and the ones on the OBD plug, just because I don't like to you know, don't like to do loads of changes at once. So I ran all the wire and I thought I'll just at the end I'll plug it in and happy days. So plugged it in. These lights came on, as you'd expect, started the bike up, it was ticking over. It ran for about 30 seconds, and then these, this, it cut out like 
somebody hit the kill switch and these red and blue I'll show you the lit up later maybe these red and blue LEDs were flashing backwards and forwards really really fast red blue red blue red blue what and I thought that's weird it doesn't make any mention of these LEDs flashing like that in the instructions I've got with the with this kit with a cruise control kit so I I restarted it thought that's odd it ran for about another five or ten seconds and cut out again and now it won't go um, I don't appear to have a fuel pump and I don't appear to have a neutral light for some weird reason and I've tried unplugging this so sort of putting it back to original so I've unplugged the throttle assembly unplugged the diagnostic plug still the same no fuel pump and no neutral light bizarrely um, so new, no fuel pump prime. Now I've just had my diagnostic machine, my Axone Direct, my Texa machine plugged into this OBD and I, let me go and get the machine and I'll, I'll explain kind of where I'm ending, ending up with this. Okay guys, right, so, uh, whoa, that's a bit overexposed, that's better. Um, right, okay, so I've got this plugged into the OBD plug, the cruise control is not connected in any way now so I, I'm I'm really worried I've got a really bad feeling about this because I seem to have some communication problems on this OBD plug it's not behaving how I'd expect it to be and because something foreign has been plugged into it it's slightly worrying so anyway I'll show you what's going on so that be the bike 2013 on 1190 not an R now the first thing is see how I've got petrol injection here normally there are different there's like ABS servicing there's usually different stuff to select there so that's the first weird thing it's like it can only it can't see all the modules on the bike I mean um and then the other thing is, normally they, it connects pretty swiftly. I might have to fast forward this, but it takes forever to connect. Watch how long it takes. I'll fast forward this. Normally it's no, no, 10 seconds and it connects. It seems to just go on and on and on. And then some of the time it won't even connect at all. Wait, wait, wait. There's something funky going on. Let's confirm, yes. So 50% of the time it will connect. The other 50% of the time it kicks me out and it won't connect. And then the other thing is, when I actually do get to connect and I start looking at parameters, it will sometimes boot me out, it will lose its connection, and sometimes the, the information you think you should be seeing, so sensor values and stuff, it's all just zeroed out. There you are. What the fuck? See, it does this. Uh, let's try one more time. Turn the key to stop. Yes. 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 Confirm. Confirm. Now, sorry about that squeaky noise. That is... That's annoying. It's the servo for the throttles. That's probably going to come out horribly on the microphone. I can't really do much about that, so bear with me. Uh, right. So you've got no comms at all. They should be blue. Right, let's go back. I'll fast forward this bit. Yes. Holy moly. It's gone to Austria to get the information. Right, now they're blue, you see, like they should be. So, if I look at fault codes, 
So that, that's what I would expect to see. So I've got some communication air temperature sensor from the top of the air box is unplugged. And I've got two coils, uh, two injectors uh, unplugged. So I'd expect to see those fault codes. So that's normal. Uh, and then if I look at parameters, now this is sometimes where it's weird. Oh no, it's actually telling me something this time. So I've got some sort of information. So the TPS is, that's me opening and closing the throttle. So I'm getting some live data from that, but it's very, very slow. Right, that's good. Let's see what else we can see. That's where we, oh, there we go. Emo, electronic immobilizer oh, unit, okay. So it said in progress, but that's okay. So that's good. Uh, what else can we see here? Now this is what happens. It boots me out. It's never happened before on one of these. Normally the connection is fairly solid. Now this is all greyed out. So the only thing I can do now... So this is... I can't get back out of this menu now. This is... Yeah, I'm done. So I've got to disconnect. Oh God, I need technical support here. Um... I think what I'm going to do is, I've got a funny feeling, well I know for a fact, so this Axone Direct, less than 10 years ago it was the absolute fucking bleeding edge of technology for independent guys like me, of course everything moves on doesn't it, this thing was two, 18 months ago, um, it stopped getting software updates, um, because it's obsolete, they've moved over now, although well, they had it before, but now it's a PC based system, so you have a little Bluetooth box, basically this without a screen, that plugs in, and then you Bluetooth to a PC, and use software on a PC, which is a little bit more powerful, if you like, although this isn't, oh hang on a minute, what I'm doing to my phone, hopefully it's still there, just got some weird, anyway, um, I need to speak to Texa, I think, something I might be a couple of versions behind with the software while well, I am a couple of versions behind and I think I might be missing something from here so maintenance and service so when I go into self-diagnosis normally I should have different modules here I'm sure I should have ABS chassis control There's something weird going on I need to do some homework uh, and get back to you about what the hell is going on with this bike. Um, I think it's going to be a part two to this one. Because I'm sure we're at 20 minutes or something already. Right. I think I need a glass of wine. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.